Hi guys, um, this is the reading and vocabulary review of the HESI exam. If you're taking a Kaplan or the T's, you still can use this information, but this is geared toward the HESI A square um, exam. I took the HESI twice. Um, yeah, but and I passed both times. But anyway, <laughs> let's get started. All right, so identifying the main idea, um, you want to keep in mind these particular um, points, guys. Ask yourself, what is the author's point what is this paragraph about and on the hesse the paragraphs are very sharp they're terse they are blunt and to the point okay <laughs> so i know sometimes some examinations or like there's like a whole entire essay but with the hesse it's like two and three paragraphs that's it so it's the main idea mentioned in one or more paragraphs because that's what the main idea is supposed to do it's supposed to be mentioned in more than one paragraph that's how you can identify the main idea and also, the main idea can be found in the beginning, and the middle, and the end of the paragraph, the introduction, or the conclusion. You have to kind of like think like a writer. You know how when we are taught in a grammar school or in English 101, how they teach you to construct an essay. So you have to keep those main topics in the um, conclusion, and you keep it in the introduction. It's the same I would just say the same type of deal. So look for details. Visualize when you're reading. Uh, read one paragraph and then stop and then summarize that paragraph. But like I said, the paragraphs are so short with the um, HESI exam. So identifying supporting ideas. Supporting ideas, in my opinion, would be like a supporting actor or actress in a film. So what are those or who are those actors that support the main idea? So basically... I just kind of figure it out that way. I just kind of think about it that way. I'll just say that. So look for um, interests, visuals. Look for examples and statistics. The author might say, I have 23,000 students that failed this exam or passed this exam. That's probably not a good example. But anyway, uh, look for details to support the main idea. Look for things that are... are once you identify the main idea, look for those things that actually support the main idea. Those supporting actress in the film, okay? Look for those, um, I can move my hand there. Look for transitional words like although, and, firstly, secondly, um, lastly, words like that. Because that will help you to understand what, uh, if it's a supporting idea. I think you might be asked what's maybe you maybe not i don't remember seeing any questions but this information is coming directly from the hesse a square examination uh book i'll leave a picture on the screen but anyway finding the meaning of words in context so this is definitely on the hesse for sure um i just recently took it and i've definitely saw this for sure <laughs> anyway so one thing you want to keep in mind about words um finding words and meaning context we want to like not think of what we know the word to be like not on our own definition but what is the author trying to say because you know with the english language the one word can have like multiple meanings so you have to kind of like understand and use the context clues to figure out what the author how the author is using the word and one way we do that is by maybe looking for the words that are before and are after the underlying word that you'll, you'll be giving. You'll be given a problem like this one that's in black. Like, what is the what is the meaning of the word phenomenon in the second paragraph? So they will, like, underline phenomenon, and they'll ask you, like, what is the meaning of it? So in the paragraph, or in some passages, you might be able to understand it more because the, the author will give you a definition. They might use synonyms. They might use anonyms, give you the opposite, and they might even restate the meaning of the word or restate the word. They might give examples of the word. It might even explain the word because there's certain genres and jargons that um, maybe the author feels that the reader wouldn't understand because it's not everyday use. Like, it's not an everyday word that you use. So, and also word structure and then the surrounding words, like I told you guys, like, it's if the sentence... Um, I'll insert the paragraph. I was supposed to insert the paragraph, but I don't know why it's not. Anyway, I'll insert the paragraph, and you'll see it highlighted in yellow. Um, and you can just kind of, like, use the contact clues that are surrounding it to understand what phenomenon means, means. But sometimes it will be a word that you... I hope I'm explaining this correctly. Sometimes it will be a word that, that is used in the same 
context that you're thinking of and as the same as the altar but sometimes it's not that way sometimes you may think you know a word and then it's like the altar doesn't mean this word he means he means it in a different context so it's really important to just pay attention to all of the tips i put on the board identifying the writer's purpose and tone so you might get a question that asks you what is the writer's tone so these are some things you want to keep in mind you want to keep in mind who is the intended audience uh, why is this being written you want to look at the writer's choice of words to call it connotation i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but what that is is essentially the words that the choice of words that the writer uses the feelings the emotions that 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 the author wants the reader to know so look out for things like that look out for the author's tone are they using words angry words nice words are they showing any biases or stereotypes um which brings me to our next point there are different types of writing so there's narrative which tells a story that would be like a novel a book a short play etc expository writing would be something that inform people something from a newspaper or magazine or encyclopedia and technical writing explains that would be like a manual to um, a new device you just received something like that and persuasive writing convinces the writer that would be like a, a opinion column hmm, a blog or maybe even an advertisement anything that persuades you to buy or to do something so yeah so if the writer for some reason doesn't stick to their particular any form of writing then it's probably an incorrect passage or it's probably something a little odd about that and you just want to pay attention to um the different tone that the author has because that'll help you to identify what's wrong and if you know what's wrong then you know what's actually supposed to be correct facts versus opinions Facts are statements that are proven. Opinions cannot be proved. So opinions are subjective. It can be anything. And facts are proven, whether it's wrong or right. All right, guys. So now we're going to focus on the vocab section. So this section was very easy, very straightforward, no gimmicks. One thing that helped me was I basically weeded out my weaknesses what words I weren't familiar with versus the words that I was familiar with and all the words that I was familiar with I didn't really focus too much on I just definitely um you know read over the definitions but the ones that I had trouble with I made flashcards for and I would like study that way and uh yeah you guys these words are actually on the test by the way so on the test the vocab part is fairly simple it's like 30 questions I believe and like literally Literally any everything that's in the book the Hesse books that you have been practicing with or you may have been doing Quizlets or anything uh, maybe even YouTube videos some people have given you some words these words are actually on the um, test the actual test so it's no, no need to worry about it it's very very easy another method that I use to remember words um, would be making them relatable to another word that I am very familiar with for example languid language starts with an L and I remember the word lethargic so they kind of mean the very similar very similar meaning language means means tired and slow and lethargic means sluggish tired so that helps me to remember it helped me remember language um, we talked about the free prefixes and the suffixes earlier in this video so this is a perfect example antebellum and plus there's a, a band or a group called antebellum a music group called antebellum so it helps me to remember what it means exactly so the anti if you know about prefixes you know that anti means before so there you go the definition the word is in the definition that's some other ways that you can uh, remember words and then violent I, I thought about um uh, you know a, a virus how a virus is harmful and severe, COVID-19 for crying out loud. So violent. And then convey, uh, I don't know why I had trouble memorizing what the heck this word meant, but what helped me was I actually Googled what it meant and it actually is a inward curve 
an outline I'll insert a picture there and since I am a visual learner and you might be as well uh, that's why I'm sharing this information it helped me to actually remember what the word was just seeing a visual so creating a visual for yourself can help you also um, remember words and then we and then we have pragmatic it means it's concerned with practical matters and one way that helped me remember was the PRA in there PRA starts with the same word as practical so that helped me to remember sometimes you have to create those um, visions or <laughs> related to another word to actually remember what the words mean so that's pretty much it guys i wish you guys well on your tests this test was very easy um it's straightforward nothing to worry about okay so stay tuned for the a and p and biology and, and math sections of the hesse um and yeah i'll see you guys soon bye